What's up, Remember everybody? What's going Ooh. on? Oh my goodness. We have we have we have a this new person. Sometimes we have a special guest. We have I... a very special guest. I'm hoping that's had, me, because had, otherwise that's had... really awkward. No, it's it's absolutely right, no, I had to bring you, on my wonderful partner and co-host of Erie Travels, Erica Lance. Uh, I had to bring her on to the nerd talk to see if uh, you know what she would think of this wonderful surprise show that we do every Tuesday. So surprise I like that it's a surprise show, hoping... show every Tuesday. That that definitely yep. that drive. I'm, I'm hoping some of our Erie travelers are uh, joining in the chat uh, on the uh, uh, Nerd Talk Facebook or uh, Nerd Talk YouTube. So, and uh, that would be cool. We no. welcome you if you Facebook. are here, travelers. Greetings, travelers. Greetings, travelers. And then for all you the Nerd Facebook Talk people, you can find us at EerieTravels.com. So. I just say so what's thank up, you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being just, here. Yeah, just so. say what's up. Oh, yeah, what's up? Okay. It's good to yeah. see Erica's face. It's been a while, man. It's been a while. It ha it has, and you have a tiara, Amanda, which just like levels up yeah. this entire program. <laughs> like, I decided I was going to start wearing it. Up. Had I known, week. I would have I would have worn some sort of accoutrement, but I did not know. Yeah, I started wearing Mark it every week. I should have given you the heads up. I'm sorry. Wear a crown. <laughs> I can't believe he didn't tell you. I need to get one I'm of those bright, pink, pretty, pretty, pretty princess ones for John. Art by uh, Ed Beard from uh, Magic the Gathering and all that, and uh, the father of the amazing Destiny Beard, who does our Eerie Travels theme song. So, um, and we'll be seeing them at the Tennessee Renaissance Festival coming up. So, we're excited. They gave uh, the game map to uh, NerdQuest back in the day for the old studio. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yep. So hey, Jerry. We, how love, you doing? we love the Beard Clan. So. There we go. Oh, oh there he, he went. He disappeared. Us, what? He? Okay, cool. All right. Well, that's... well then, uh, Amanda, what did you do this weekend? <laughs> What else would I possibly do? I okay, so I started episode one on Wednesday night. You know, Amazon was five minutes late, a whole five minutes late, and I'm like, you guys and your tech issues. But whatever. So I got episode one watched on Wednesday night. Um, watched the about half ish on Thursday, and then finished it on Friday. Um, so over the weekend, I don't even know what I did. To be completely honest with you, I did a bunch of nothing because i was relaxing from spookala it's like my other weekend off this weekend is my first weekend off this month um i have another weekend off this month but i will be working a lot on the computer because i have a giant promo that i'm part of for three days um so that's going to be a whole lot of fun luckily at least my newsletter is scheduled to go out already so everything else is just kind of like social media stuff and then of course there's clearwater comic-con next weekend so we'll get to that that's what I was about to say. You got Clearwater Comic Con. It's great this, to see Erica weekend, on the right? show. He loves Erie Travels. Yay! Oh, who's that? Brian King. Sorry, Brian didn't oh, play okay. it like that. Hey. Yay. Cool. So, yes, we definitely cool. have thanks, at thanks least one family. Thanks for tuning in, Brian. At least yeah. he's willing to chat. Yeah, I knew we'd have a couple joining. <laughs> so, um, now, uh, you've got Clearwater Comic Con this weekend. This is my first one I'm missing. I think I've been at every one. This is since the, first the first one, one I'm doing in like four years. Yeah. No. I love four years? Comic Con. It's it's Two a blast. Years? I don't remember. It's been a while. I think the last one I did it's was been 2021. A while for you. Yeah, I say, I've been at every one, and this is the first one I'm missing, sadly. But uh, that's where's it going to be I this year? It. I can't wait. Um, it's at the Greenwood Rec Center in Clearwater. Oh, the Rec Center where it's been the last couple of years. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well. Erica, did you watch any of uh, Fallout, which is what I'm assuming I, I Amanda's did. talking about binging? I did because oh, um, you said that you wanted me to show up for this play, this wonderful place that we are here virtually. Yeah, I, <laughs> I sound drunk. It's fine. I really wish I was drunk. But 
Um, yeah, <laughs> you so and I both. watched three, um, three episodes last night, and um, yeah, but I'm also, you know, I've been playing Fallout since before it was cool, you know, and yeah, <laughs> so I, I come from the, the video game aspect of Fallout, so yeah, I, I watched three right. episodes, I can well, talk to three. Okay, and I can talk uh, the old games too because I've been playing since uh, before it was called Fallout when it was Wasteland for the Commodore 64 and the Atari 800, I think. Uh, it might have been the Isn't Atari 400. 8,000? 8, 8, oh, this, this, the 2600 was their console, but the uh, computer was the Atari 800. And oh, yeah. uh, they had a a game that was a uh, wasteland and uh, you were in the post apocalypse and you became a, uh, uh, a Texas Ranger and you ran the apocalypse trying to bring peace back to the apocalypse. Oh. And they, the company that made that was black. Eye, uh, was a uh, uh, Infocom. And then they faded away and became black Isle. And when they tried to, make Wasteland 2, they couldn't, so they made Fallout, which was originally based on uh, GURP, the GURPS role-playing oh, game, GURPS. tabletop GURPS, Dunk. and then literally, was it three months before the game was due out, Steve Jackson from GURPS pulled the rights to the, uh, the role-playing game, and they had to make the whole special system from scratch right then and there and redo the whole video game for that system. And that became Fallout 1. Well, I have great. to say it's definitely, um, I didn't know that history. And I can say, as per usual, in full honesty, I don't care. Um, because <laughs> nobody could have uh, I'm glad she that. said it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they made Fallout 1 and 2. They made I mean, Fallout 1 and 2, and then they lost the rights while they were making Fallout 3. And it got <laughs> made by then, you know, it disappeared for 10 years, and that's when Bethesda showed up and made Fallout 3. Which is the and one New most Vegas everybody remembers. And then they screwed it all up with 76. Well, no, no, the, you guys, New uh, Vegas. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Shh, time out, time out. We have a very special person in the chat right now. Very special. Who's that? Former co-host Mike. Hi, Mike. What? Mike's in the yeah, chat. Yeah, he's in the chat on Facebook right now. Everybody, say hi to he's Mike. Got time for the chat. He's got time to be I on the show. I don't remember oh, that gosh. guy. Wasn't that? Was he the hairy guy? Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah, the guy with the beard. The guy who gave us oh, the Gundam okay. education. Yeah, I think guy. I remember him. Yeah. I think I remember yeah. him. Is he kind saying of. how boring but, uh, uh, Mark's Fallout conversation was? Because that would be cool if he agreed with us. Say, <laughs> New Vegas, I think he's about to agree with us, yes. The reason New Vegas <laughs> is different from the others is it was made by the guys who made Fallout 1 and 2. So it was the original right. guys came back and made New Vegas. That became Obsidian. So, yeah. so I have to I disagree mean, with you, though, Amanda. I like 76. I did at first. I did. But then there were too many glitches all at once. And I stopped playing. I haven't played it since. I got... And then somehow or another wound up with not one, but two copies of the physical disc when I got back down to Florida. And I was pissed because I was supposed to have 176 and one Fallout 4. Okay. Did you saw four? Um... I had to get Game Pass to get Fallout 4 back. Uh, no, I, um, 76 I fell in love with because it was West Virginia. And it had all the cryptids. So well, that's that was my favorite part. 76. Like all of the Mothman and stuff. I was like, heck yes, yeah, so you get to hang out with Mothman. Oh, wait, I got to kill him? No, 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 no. I don't want to kill him. I just want to hang out with him. I want to party with him. Um, Charles is asking how New Vegas was. New Vegas was I great. I thought it was good. I like New Vegas. Yeah, I actually like New Vegas. I think it's my favorite of all the fallouts. Um, it took me a while to get into it. I think when it first came out, it was buggy as hell. Just like all of the fallouts, even the old original well, just ones. Like, I hate to say it, but most video games at this point, 
either do the yep. smart thing of doing a very long lead up period, Baldur's Gate, where they're bug fixing and bug fixing and yeah. bug fixing, and they're like, you may play it Still for almost game. nothing, you know? Or, or they go, hey, we're going to release this. And then, like, the Star Wars, the recent Star Wars game, which was badass, but at first, when they released it, not so badass. Like, no, no, it was a problem. Buggy as hell. Yeah, super buggy. Super buggy. So I think the games companies do one of those two avenues, and not all of them do it very well. And it partially depends on if they're running out of money when it comes to release time. Because if they use up all their the money that they have, then they go, quick, rush to market and have everybody hate it for a long time and say how bad it is. Exactly so. what happened with uh, New Vegas. Exactly what happened with 76. So. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a really rushed with that one for sure. But I will but say the TV show, I was college. beautifully impressed. I was it's good. It was fantastic. Yeah. I had high hopes and they were met. Really? With the exception of I, Maximus. I have I take issue with the character of Maximus, but John has to get out his opinion of the show first. Eh. That's it. Eh? It was good. I, I mean, I thought I'll it, see what he's got on in the I background, was, right? Everybody in the chat, you see what John's got on in the background, and he's saying, eh. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I don't so, think it's like earth shattering, but it was no. it was actually well done. Like it wasn't horribly yeah. done. I like twisted metal better. Saying I my only complaint is a nitpick, and it's it's my same nitpick with every post-apocalypse tv show I had the same problem with twisted metal where it's the post-apocalypse universe but they all have super clean clothes in these post-apocalypse yes. towns uh. <laughs> even you know when when the lady in the shop and the you know and the you know and um uh. leland leland from evil playing the the, the mad scientist <laughs> uh you know, who i will never not leg. refer to like, man as leland He's Leland from Evil. I don't know his his actor name. I don't. I don't. I don't want to know. He's Leland from I Evil. Don't either. But, I don't um, remember his character name. Just the dead doctor. A, but no, he's in Leland. Super clean clothes. He's been walking the wasteland for years or decades, and he's super clean clothes. He has and... not been walking the wasteland for decades. <laughs> what part of the show time. did you watch? He has he, the dog. He, there, he has the. He was out there for even, this much time. This much time. Yeah, but he. But even. Uh, no, but he uh, had run what's from the, the ghoul. Walter he Goggins. Ran from... he's, he's been buried in the ground. He comes right, out. Time out, time out, time out. Now clean. you have pushed a button by accident and you don't understand that you did it. If somebody else calls him Walter one more effing time, I will stop speaking to you. His name is Walton. O N, not E R. The boy is from Sorry. Alabama. Walton he Goggins. Is Alabama, My apologies. which means his name yep. is not normal. Sorry to any Alabamans watching. Y'all know what I'm the, talking about. The amazing about. Walton Goggins, yes, who makes everything better. He is one of my favorite actors. Incredible. And you're incredible. like the third person today that has called him Walter, and I'm like, I'm going to hurt people. My apologies. I don't want to hurt people. That's not accurate. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't I just accurate, but I don't hurt people. It, Honey, I ain't the bitch you knew two years ago last year. Promise. It it was okay. And that's because I watched it. I watched it the first time driving. I listened to it. Listen to it. Mm. Um, and then I've watched it over the last couple of days in between shows and stuff. So I kind of got it's and it still didn't make me go, oh my god, best thing in the whole one now. I like I like Goggins. I mean, you know, he was I, I everything he's done, I kinda I kinda dug. I I like him. He's always a great bad guy. Always. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, he really is. He's always. Including that three, three to five minutes he had in House of a Thousand Corpses. That man can do no wrong by me. No wrong. I don't I, care. I don't know about no wrong, he's, but he's just, he's a good bad guy. So, yeah. Anyway. He's good at whatever he does. Know. He was a good guy in House of a Thousand Corpses, but, I mean, yep. he got all of five minutes of screen time. Two lines. Right. Thanks, Rob Zombie. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna. We watched the fabulous gemstones because 
Yes. I'm just going to throw that out right, there. Right, just jumped on. That was one of my favorite characters. Baby, baby Billy is So I have a bit of a problem getting back time. into the Righteous Gemstones because of who showed me that show initially. So I'm still uh, a little weird with getting into or back into things from the time period of the mistake. Hey, was what, that was that the one where he was in drag? Was, huh? was that the one where he was no, in drag? No, Jack he's not in drag, I don't think. Well, he's 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 the old the oldest brother of uh the girl who uh, the the mother who's dead now. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. He's, okay. Yeah. yeah, he's the old time singer. Baby Billy. Uh, Baby yeah, Billy. Baby Billy. So. All right, so we're going to jump on some topics. We're going to go to Eric. Well, hang on a second. We have, we have a question from the chat. Uh, Brian oh. wants to know what I didn't like about Maximus. Oh. I don't know where to start. Um, okay, we don't time for that. that me keep... very much. I'm just going to keep it short. No, he you're reminds not. me very much of the squandered character of whatever John Buyega was in um rise of sky trash um was that finn Finn, was was finn john boyega or was finn the rebel dude that was poe that was poe okay okay so finn yeah very very finn very um whiny very much a bitch who does not belong in that power armor and he didn't prove himself to me until the very last episode so i really hope they don't squander him in the same sense that they squandered finn because Finn could have been so much more. And the guy even looks kind of like Finn. And I was like, is that John Boyega? And it's not. But he was just no. too whiny. I'm sorry. Paladin dance, man. The synth was not even that whiny until he found out he was a synth. So sorry to those of you who haven't. I'm not even going to say which game that's from. I'm just going to leave that out. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I had a problem with that. I thought he was whiny. All right. Okay. 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 Now, John, you're going to move on to topics. Yeah, we're going to do Erica's first because she's our guest. And she only gave me one topic, and it's all about Mark. So, um, yeah, we'll... it's, it's weird <laughs> how that happened. Yeah, I, yeah, no I, mean, I don't, how... know, don't know how that <laughs> happened, Mark. Now, I'll help her pick out topics yeah, in a whole nine yards. Earlier. She'll be ready. She was, you know, she hey, Mark? She called you out she on was that. supposed to film, her and my wife were supposed to film footage at Repticon. And they both completely forgot it. And Carrie, this just this afternoon, went, "Oh yeah, we were supposed to film stuff at Repticon." I'm like, "Yes, yes, you why were." Why would I film anything at Repticon? Like, why would okay. I do that? So, Her for talk. transparency, Mark, we are okay with you talking about your books. That's why you're yeah. on here. We want you to talk about book. your books. It's it's not Mark's book. It's Mark's house. So when. There's a little, there's an origin story that goes with this slightly, and I won't be All long, right. I promise. Um, well, let's so watch it, let's Mark... watch it, and then we'll, let's watch the video, and then we'll come back to the origin story. Okay, watch the video. There we go. Travelers, so we talk often about Mark's haunted house, but what's really interesting is now you can see it because I arrived, and look. He has a ghost that leaves books. It's kind of like a librarian, pretty badass. Don't forget, we'll see you on the other side. So, Mark, he would send pictures. I don't know why Mark has never filmed a video for giving me a bunch of crap about not filming a video at a reptile show. Anyway, um, don't. So, he, when he looked at moving up this direction, because we're both in the um, Smoky Mountain area now, but he, I was here first, and he, um, him and his beautiful wife decided to move up this way. And I went to the house that they were looking at and I walked in and my first words were, so uh, what's that? Because I could sense this thing in the back room like big time. I was like, what's that? And he was like, oh yeah. So the old woman who they bought the house from his husband died. And so he was there. But what's interesting is almost from day one, when they moved in, they would have books that would show up right in front of, that door and that door led to where his office was. So there would be books all the time in that door. It was very, it's very weird. So when we got back from wherever the heck, oh, we, cause we'd gone to the, there was the book and I was like, okay, living proof of the haunted house. So Mark has a ghost. And the funny thing is this ghost, it's not like knocking a book off a shelf. 
these books are in a completely different room and they're usually behind several other layers of books because if you know anything about mark he's basically a librarian so anyway you have these books that are layers deep that in this ghost and i'm not quite sure what the messaging is behind this but i think he really either wants mark to read them or is sending a subliminal message and we should be writing down these titles because he's going to tell us about the apocalypse that's going to happen that's what i think <laughs> are you looking and, inside uh, for circled letters you there's words? something right behind you what he says there's someone in the chat saying there's something behind you it's right behind you uh, do you who? have facebook pulled up at all by chance right now no oh. who 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 it's, are we talking about you it's, it's our good friend james michael roddy oh michael roddy yeah hey hey james yeah, I'm no, we kidding. have the this this book thing's been going on since literally the week we moved here, where um, one a book from one of my shel many bookshelves will wind up in the hallway next door, right towards uh, the door of Harry's room, which used to be kind of like an art uh, room for the previous owners, and I guess they would pick he would pick up a book and walk into the hallway and walk into that room reading it. But now that door stays closed because that's where Claudius the Wonder Lizard lives and we don't want him running throughout the whole house. So when we're gone for a few days, we come back and a book, it's like he reading it, walks into the room and then the book stops, but he keeps going. So that's what we think anyway. That's our theory on it. So, Got to get a that's cool. motion camera in there just to see what happens and what's really going on. But that's that's the theory at the moment. I can send you a camera. I can send you a nighttime camera, too. That's probably what we'll need. You really want to <laughs> see what, what's doing that. I think that's definitely the message. Because no, nope, yeah, they're, they're, nope. these each of these bookshelves is like three rows deep. And there's stuff from like two or three rows in, usually. And, but so he has to go disturbed. back and get stuff, like, right? So yeah. So Ronnie is saying they think the same. Either read the book and give him a review, or at least read the title messages. Okay. Well, well, yeah, well we've we've kept track. Gary's Gary's got a photo ev uh, file of every book that's been left there. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I've got a stack of a few of them still right over here. So, I'll. Uh, Oh, like one was Win, Lose, or Die, the James Bond novel. I thought that one was fun. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, it's great. Um, the, the, uh, Does that mean he played Russian Roulette and Lost? It's from the uh, John Gardner versions uh, later, after Ian Fleming had stopped, so... Yeah, well, but does, does that mean the ghost played Russian Roulette and Lost, Win, Lose, or Die? I don't know. No, but most of the time he's in the Let closet in Mark's office, by the way, is where yeah, he is over pretty here. much stays, is in that closet, because he's there when when I'm there, and I'm glad he's there and not walking about the place. I'm good with without that. Thank you. You may stay in the closet. <laughs> you may stay in the closet. So, Amanda. We may have to get, uh, we may have to get yes. parageeks out here to, to do a study. Oh, that would be fun. So Amanda, back up. We're, you yes. got something coming up this weekend, don't you? I do. I have Clearwater Comic Con coming up on Saturday um, from 10 to 5. So if you're local, come out. It's a free event put on by the library, and it's gotten so big. Um, the last time I did it, it was still at the library, and now it is at the Greenwood Rec Center um in clearwater and then yep so there's a creators on ai panel that my good friend bob is going to be on i believe that's at 11 a.m hey, and then at 2 p.m celebrating women writers is me maria devivo and ac haiti um she's new to me i've never met her before so i look forward to that um awesome fun for the family cosplay contest our friend dj is going to be judging one of the judges of the cosplay contest. Um, John, can you go? There we go, the schedule. Um, so here's the schedule for Saturday. Um, all of this is also on my Facebook. Um, 
Oh my goodness, what is my Facebook page? <laughs> you guys, I'm terrible. I'm pretty sure it's Amanda Bird author. Uh, hang on, I'm pulling it up now. What is what is my link here? Um, Facebook.com author Amanda Bird. My bad. Um, so just uh, I don't even want to say search author Amanda Bird. I mean, you can you go to the page, not the profile. <laughs> I don't, I don't I don't even use that profile anymore. It's kind of a backup if I get locked out of my ads account because Facebook is weird. Um, oh, Charles said he's going to be there. That's awesome. Um, oh, our so good yeah, there's friends, opening uh, ceremonies. Um, our friend Austin Janowski is actually going to be part of the opening ceremonies, I believe. Um, oh, nice. He's a guest of the Comic-Con. Um, comic artist, inker. Um, and then... I'm not entirely sure what the photo op says. And then there's the panel that Bob is on. And then there's the Disney villains performance featuring Lady DJ. Cause I'm going to call her that. Cause I don't know how to pronounce her name. Mark, do you know how to pronounce that name? Oh no, I don't you even try. Dark, dark, yeah, me dark um, but she's, I have, I have, I, I, she's, she's a, awesome. She's a great belly dancer. We love her. We love her. Um, actually got to hang out with her this past Saturday at a housewarming party. Um, and then epic. there's the kids' costume showcase. Pika Belchu, she's awesome. I think she's, I can't remember who she said she's going to have with her. Um, so that'll be fun. And then there's the panel with me and Maria. But there's lots of, you know, there's a bunch of different vendors, whether they're comic artists. Uh, Rum, um, Rum Skills things. doing a lightsaber demo. So they're pretty awesome. Yes, too, they so. are. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, um, looking forward to that. There's a bunch of authors as always, because what would be an event put on by a library without a bunch of authors? There's at least six of us. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's actually more of that. Um, oh gosh, Steve Altier is gonna be there as well. Um, oh. I, I can't remember, I looked at the list earlier oh, today. Some of the Four Horsemen. I, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, and the honorary the Four Horsemen, horsemen. yeah. Very I nice. who that is. Brian, there should be plenty of parking. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that that center's got tons of parking, oh. and it's free. Ben Ben just gave free us pronunciation. Darjuzina. Darge, oh. Yeah, free Darge, parking. There's free That's parking in Clearwater. Right? I know, right? <laughs> right. Hold on, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> yeah, be nice. Let and me then, behave myself. Yeah. So, no. Mark. Yeah. Yes. We're going to talk about, you want us, let's talk about Joker. All right. So, uh, for those of you that don't, you know, have been living under a rock, there are they are doing a sequel to Joaquin Phoenix, uh, his Joker movie a couple years ago. And this one has the introduction of his Harley Quinn in that universe. And this is an alternate universe. So this is not the usual way they're doing things. And if you watch right. the first one, you know, it's pretty dark and pretty gritty. Yeah. So this one, dark and gritty, but a musical. All right, here we go. Let's go, boys. So high. Wakey, wakey. Hey, Fleck, you got a joke for us today? We use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures within ourselves. I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. Let's get out of here. What the 
What changed are them? Well, I'll tell you what's changed. We're not alone anymore. That's what we should be talking about. First weekend in October. Okay, so. Oh, really? I didn't. Nope. I didn't what? see the first Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie. But oh. I am a fan of her. And I think her as like a she Joker is probably the greatest role she will ever play. Now, the caveat is I did not see her in AHS. So I don't know how she, how good she was in AHS. She is but brilliant. That woman's got a lot of talent. Like one no, of the songs yeah, I was jamming out to while I was putting my makeup on was, I'm sorry, two of the songs I was jamming out to while I was putting my makeup on after I got out of the shower were her. So yeah, I love I her. Think she's, that, she's part of my. I, I will say I'm really excited because I feel like one of the biggest problems with the DC universe is they keep trying to tell the same story the same way over and over again with yeah, only think... minor little tweaks to it, which then, not that there aren't great performances of it, but I feel like they've done really well for not um, trying to make this a movie. You know what I mean? Like that's what Joker's an accoutrement to Batman generally. And I'm glad right. that they're not doing that. So. Yeah, no, I think this looks this looks much better than it did before. Yeah, so I, I I was a little nervous when they said musical, and I was like, oh gosh, that's not going to be for me. But man, I am excited. So because this, however, looks incredible. So yeah, I'm I'm all. She in. was actually really brilliant in A Star Is Born. Oh yeah, I didn't the remake see that. with yeah. Bradley Cooper. She was. That That's movie why I didn't is see it. Yeah, it's gut wrenching. I'm, I'm not. Okay, so I'm very biased against Bradley Cooper because my very first anything I saw with him in it was the douchebag he played in Nip Tuck. So that was my oh. first encounter yeah, with no, Bradley Cooper. He's not that character. And then it at turned all. into Rocket Raccoon, which is great. Um, but okay. Uh, I like him in a lot of a lot of things. So he's uh, yeah. You know, I, I go back to, to Gladiator. To a I think lot of he was different things like then, a Star is Born and things like that. So I will. Wait a minute. He was in Gladiator. In the original Gladiator, he was uh, the uh, Commodus, Emperor Commodus. Yeah. And uh, let's go. Let's I, move I'm on to your next one, brother. That... Okay. Well, next topic was the heartbreak. That was X Men '97. I that we that we're at the mid season point on this Disney revival of the classic X Men animated, and they ended on such a harsh note. Oh my gosh, um, it broke a lot of people. It broke the internet definitely for a few days, and then they posted the trailer for the second half of the season just yes uh, just a day or two ago. And it's already generating a lot. So let's watch that trailer and let's see if you can catch some of the cameos. You have to get everyone out. He's coming. If only you knew the future we have in store. While you X-Men have been holding hands, we've been placing dominoes. You think there's really going to be a war? <laughs> We shall not live our days wondering if we could have saved more. We face this as we always have. Together. Uh, 
So, Cap Shield. Cap Shield. <sighs> that's all I'm saying. I'm excited. So, here's some trivia for you. Uh, do yep. you remember when that uh, that came out as a hardback cra- uh, graphic novel in the 90s? The, uh, the, the that which one? one? The original uh, 97. The original, yeah. yeah. It came out in. Uh, they were hardback, softback, but they were graphic novels. They were they were like super thick. You remember they those? Were based on the cartoon, yeah. Yep. So my my dad's company was the guy. We were the guys that uh, did the color plates for that uh, series. That's nice. when I. That's when I was. That's when I wrote. That's when I was writing code for Cod Barrett and pixel craft out of long island and that was the the first book that they said here try your system out on these and if they work away you go and that's when i sat in the same room as uh stan lee and didn't give a shit who he was really didn't care who he was this is some old freaking dude telling me you better get these colors right if you don't you'll never work in this industry blah 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 so <laughs> my dad still has those. I, my dad still has oh. all the print series that we did. I think there was like ten of them. Yeah. Wow, Woo. that's pretty epic. That's Some pretty history epic. There. Now, the show itself, uh, no spoilers for those who haven't watched it, but they killed off two major characters already. Yeah, and they're only yeah. four episodes in, so our fifth five episodes. What's it now. on? Five. Oh, that's right. It's uh, on Disney Plus. Yeah, the yeah. one I refused to give so, money to. I liked yeah, it. They, they, it wasn't. It, it, I don't think it was great, but it was good. You know, I felt the like I original. Was, I I really enjoyed the original um, uh, Spider-Man series that was on at that time back in the nineties, and then yes. in the early two thousands they did a really good Avengers cartoon mm-hmm. called uh, mm-hmm. Earth's Mightiest Her- Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Which led up to before the movie came out. A couple of the like Iron Man and Thor had come out, but I don't think the Cap movie had come out yet. Not and yet. Avengers definitely no. hadn't come out yet. And they did that comic, that cartoon, and it led up to the the movie. And then they changed it to make it match the movie, which you right. know kind of killed that series. But uh, that's a fun one to watch if you get a chance. It's very very cool. So so are you, uh, I, I'm glad. I mean so. Are you liking it? Or are you not liking it? Are you like, eh, oh, you're loving it? I'm actually it? Okay. liking this better than I like the original. It's uh, they've definitely had some fun with it, and they brought they've, they they did the whole Inferno storyline, which would yeah. have been like twelve issues of the comics. Right. They did it in twenty minutes on this show, minutes. which was perfect. Yeah. That's all it needed. Yeah, yeah and uh, and now they just done Extinction, which is they did it in an episode instead of dragging it out for a year and i i'm loving yeah. that so yeah. we're so, getting into that yeah. weird 90s era of x-men now so it's kind of fun <laughs> and, and you know that, and it's a fun era so in my opinion yeah. so because you know they really crashed it yeah I, I, nisha in the chat i agree uh nisha i did the first episode didn't draw me in but the second and third ones i got hooked fast it took it took, it took three See, that's why I tell everybody if you're always, if you're nerd talk, if you're on nerd talk, you got to give it three because it typically it's that half of the second and the third you go oh. Same thing with Walking Dead. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to squirrel squirrel here, but Walking Dead the first two episodes freaking sucked. They were horrible. You know? and then that's that third one. That's watching the Walking Dead. The third one got me, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was me with uh, so Resident Alien. I the first episode of Walking Dead with the hospital scene. That was brilliant. Uh, brilliant. Uh, the first two episodes uh, put me to sleep. I couldn't do it anymore. I'm like, good Lord. I mean, it's like, okay, so, and you got to you know, think, in the first two episodes, some of the worst special effects you've ever seen in your life. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is a B-freaking movie. This is not going to make it. And then the third episode gets like, okay, that's good. I'm in. I do I'm in. need to take... catch up on it because I, I like the character of Negan. Um, I did too. See, so I hate, I hate to go squirreling on this, but so Negan, right? Negan is a perspective. You've got to come from a perspective point of view. Negan was the exact yep. same as, um, oh shit, 
well, it's the exact same as uh, the other group. So he was just protecting his man, just protecting his, right? So I don't know. You know, Rick was, you know, Rick was good. We loved Rick, but when Negan came along, you're first. You're like, ah, oh, you killed Glenn. You kill, ah, uh, you killed. Um, oh shit, the redheaded guy. Yeah, you, you killed him, and and it was, but you knew it was coming because they kind of follow the comic books, kind of, you know. Not, not perfectly, because there was no Daryl, you know, there's no Daryl. So, but anyway, we got to get on it. So now, Mark, I'm confused <laughs> with with this hodag. What is hodag? Okay, so Erica and I have an epic trip in about, what, about three weeks. We are heading yeah. to Rhinelander, Wisconsin which uh, is a big festival. It's up there with Mothman in popularity. Okay. And this is a creature called the Hodak. And okay. this creature, we did an episode on it for um, Eerie Travels for April Fools because it was a famous hoax. It was this, uh... uh, it was, it's a long time monster. Daniel Boone supposedly fought it. Paul Bunyan supposedly fought this thing. This thing is built like an alligator, but has horns and <laughs> giant teeth, the head of a pig or a dog, of uh, you know, furry with scales. It's yeah. insane. And now we, the story is that it's this fake thing because a guy posted, he, he carved one out of wood and put, took okay. a picture of it and said he caught it. And oh. then the... Oh, he, he carved it and then he painted it. Like, the thing yeah, was... painted he, it. He painted it and added fur like he... It's like a fake taxidermy of this creature. Oh, God. There's, oh, there's a right. fabulous it, picture of it. Yeah, Let's watch the picture. video then. The, yeah, watch. This is the festival. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that's so that green thing. guy, I want to hug him. If that's what that creature yeah. looks like, I'm just going to hug him. That, that's the whole thing. There's no so, reason to run. He's cuddly. Now, on the way there, Somebody we're hoping to stop Lake in Lake Geneva with me. and visit the TSR headquarters. 
the former TSR headquarters. Uh, so the Dungeon Hobby School. So we'll see if that we're, turns out. So we're doing that. I like how he says that. Yeah. That's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and we're on a couple of spooky yeah, places love while we're up there. monsters yeah. like that. I, Mothman. You know, there's so many. This one is like completely made up. Kind of well, it's now I, we're starting to look at. I look at my creature, the Mishapishu, the underwater panther, and I start to look at some of the Hodag stuff and starting to look at that, and I'm realizing they're very similar. So I think maybe there was some truth to the Hodag now, and I'm changing my opinion on them very quickly. Maybe the same person made them both up. Did you think about that? What? Oh, what was I that, said, Amanda? I said maybe the same person made them both up. Did you think about that? Wow. Well, because that hoe dag ain't real. I'm sorry. Well, it, no. I will. Here's mm -hmm. one thing that's interesting, though, just to drop this. I'm with this Eric little, on one. Yeah, here we go. Is that we've talked to a lot of people about <laughs> tulpas, and tulpas are creatures that are generated from intention and thought, aka Santa Claus. Ah, oh, yes, so, those. Um, it's <laughs> interesting Bunny. though when you have something like this, like the not deer, and this is one we reference all the time. Not deer was something made up on creepy pasta, right? But now mm -hmm. people see the not was deer. Was Thin Man made up on yeah. creepy pasta also? No, Bunny cool. Man's real. Bunny Man was a real event in the yeah. Bunny Six Man's no, real. Thin Man, Thin Man, not Bunny Man. Oh no, Slender, Slender Man. Man, Slender Man, Slender Man. Yeah, Slender Man. Yeah, Slender Man was, was pasta made too, up on creepy pasta, but the Tampa Trestle Monster, which may have been Slender Man. Maybe from that, yeah, may may have influenced that original thing, and that's I'm wondering if Mishapishu may be what influenced the legend of the Hodag, which became the Great Hoax. But what yeah. about that original creature? And the Hodag kind of ties into the Crosswick Serpent and a bunch of other things that were seen. So I'm I'm going suddenly where this was completely me going, this was a hoax. There's no way this is so real. Where, now I'm sitting there going, where's this at? Huh. Rhineland, where's this at? The very top of Wisconsin. Hold on, like Wisconsin. if you go to the top, that's yeah. where it is. Okay, and it's yeah. Rhineland? Rhineland. 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 So that means that they're either a bunch of Germans or a bunch of Swedes. Swedes. Which means oh, they're sorry. potentially Viking. Which means yep. it's potentially oh, bring over from the Viking world, right? Exactly. Because over there, that's a different world. They have all kind of mythical creatures that we don't even have. We've not even explored heavily. And it could have came in on and the Viking ship when they came over. And that's why we do eerie travels to find out. In this case, and everybody coming here from Mexico has brought a chupacabra, and somebody is neglecting me here and not sharing because I want an effing chupacabra. What would <laughs> they don't taste chupacabra good. Chupacabra, exactly, Amanda. Just out of curiosity, what would your? Because it's not like a chihuahua. So what would you do Whoa. with the chupacabra? Good. I'm glad I don't like chihuahuas. I don't like those little bastards. You're still what not answering what, what you're doing chupacabra. With what you would do I'm, with a I'm, chupacabra? I'm doing that. What I would do with the chupacabra is cuddle it, and I would basically do to, with it what I did to my cat. I would make it such a mama's kid. It would be amazing. Be freaking well, amazing. It's, now, it's my on dude the cat. It's on might the disagree because the chupacabra is going to come over and mess with the dog, and he's going to be like, did you really have to adopt a chupacabra? Yes, babe, I did have to adopt a chupacabra. However, <laughs> I want a pet chupacabra. Of course you do. It's just a big hairless cat. Or is, there's is actually a, hairless a breed dog? of cat called Lakewood that looks like a chupacabra. Depending on which like type of chupacabra, because the ones in Florida seem to be more reptilian. The ones yeah. in Southwest seem to be more like coyotes with mange looking things. So right. there's yes, and there's a there's breed a of cat of called Lakewood. of the chupacabra. Right. There is a Lakewood cat that looks like a chupacabra. There's actually one that's very Instagram famous, and his name is Chupi. Chupi yep. the Chupacabra. Oh, the werewolf cats. Yep. All right. right so we got one more from Mark. That's um, okay. I, I, Did I you guys get a chance this? to watch Invincible? No. 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 Still haven't watched Invincible, anybody? Okay. They, they, they're the season two ended, ended epically. 
but there's a joke in it where he goes to a comic con and meets the author of his favorite comic book seance dog which is basically dr strange if he was a puppy um right. and it's robert kirkman and robert <laughs> kirkman who does the you know invincible he did walking dead this is him as a cameo and it's a joke about why it's taking so long to do the next season of invincible so All let's right. watch this real quick it's only All a minute right, or cool. two and uh a minute. it's pretty hysterical Season of Seance Dog coming out. You mean the show? Probably not for another year. Sorry, animation takes a long time. Oh, I can't imagine how much work it must be for those fight scenes. Yeah, those take a while, but we cut corners in other places to make it manageable. You ever notice that sometimes whoever's speaking has their mouth off camera so you never see their lips moving? Huh, I didn't notice that. Yeah, or we'll cut to the back of someone's head while they're talking for the same reason. Other times we'll do a wide shot, slowly pan across it. It looks like it's animated, but it's so far away, you don't notice nothing's moving. The best part is, because all these scenes have limited animation, we can make the drawings even better. But sometimes the artists get carried away and it kind of looks like a different show. It's crazy what you can get away with. Thanks for coming by. No, thank you. I'm gonna watch season two way closer. I got... <laughs> I thought that was very meta and way fun. So I concur. Uh, it was funny. Yeah, they they definitely the animation style between season one and season two is noticeably different, and uh, because they rushed it because of all the strikes, they had to they didn't want to delay too long, and they had to yeah. do what they had to do. So it's still great. I love it. I still think it's and the cast is epic. It's half the cast of Fallout. And this uh, Goggins is uh, Cecil in it. He plays basically the Nick Fury of the Invincible universe. And oh, that's uh, cool. yeah, definitely a great character and all that. So, but uh, yeah, no, oh, that's, that was that was from the Invincible show that you were talking about last week. That's season two of Invincible, yes. So that okay. was a tail end, little bit at the end of that. So definitely watch some Invincible. I think you guys will love it. So if you like the boys. Yeah. You're gonna love Invincible. Love the boys. I love. The you boys. love the boys, and you yeah. love speaking of Batman the, boys, the animated series, or that old Batman animated series universe, like Justice League mm -hmm. Unlimited and all that. Just yeah. imagine if that was done by grownups, by the people who did the boys. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, that is super. It's, cool. it's a it's a takeoff on all things DC Marvel, but really well done. Amazing characters. Kirkman at his best, and then Seth Rogen. Producing good stuff again, so can't go wrong with that. Yeah. So once again, we're not going to get to my shit. Just I'll let's do your topic no, right now. After, we got, I, we got I a minute. Said in the chat, like, <laughs> what happened to your stuff, John? Yeah, well, but I didn't, we, we don't, don't have no time because I won't anymore. even. I can't even play. I, I I can't even play one trailer. So anyway, we'll get back to it next week. It's all there. I'm going to talk about. I will tell you what I'm talking about. So. I did some shows that um, were on streaming platforms that are spinoffs of movies. Or, well, one of them wasn't. One of them was The Airbender, The Last Airbender. But I did The Gentleman, The Last Airbender, Django, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I've watched them all. Actually, I've watched them all several times. I've watched The Gentleman now three times because I really do like it. Um, if you haven't seen these, go and watch them and get, because that way next week when we talk about them, they're, you'll like, other than The Last Airbender, it, that's just the last Airbender. It's the same exact same, but I do like the new, new characters. Um, a little less moody on the on the Fire Kingdom guy. So, um, and I'm I'm horrible with names, I, I, and I suck at it. It's kind of funny. I work I worked in the audio industry for years, right? I mean, I worked for Airster Records, Universal Studios. I was a sweetening engineer, a line tech, and a duping engineer. Right. I worked on all these people things. I can I can tell you the lyrics of the song, but I can't tell you the name of the song. And I can't pull I can't tell you the, the band. It's uh, I'm horrible. It's too many hits in the head. That's what it is. But I but I know what I'm talking that's about because okay. I hell I worked for that. And I'll probably be able to yeah. tell you the band and the name of the Dang. song because that's right. I grew up yeah. listening to the radio. I mean, uh, 
any band that I work. like, I toured with Phil Collins. I, I, I worked with ACDC. I worked with Tower of Power. Um, I did uh, uh, Motley Crue. Um, and these are all Phil live Collins. stuff that I did. Um, so, I mean, I got to work with all these awesome, absolutely phenomenal people. So, um, and it was, I, I have good life, but, you know, by the time I'm 70, I won't remember shit. So, you know, that's why, that's why Dylan's, that's why Dylan's name is Dylan. Because I figured if I scream out, Dylan, either Dylan will come or Dylan will show up. One of my kids and my wife is going to show up. So. <laughs> This well, is, gang, uh, yeah. that's it. We got 30 seconds. So thank you for showing up and we appreciate being part it. of the show. Thank you, Erie Travelers, for joining us. We had a few of you in the audience. This is yep. Nerd Talk. And those on. of you who are local, if you if you see me on Saturday, let me let me know who you are so I don't feel like a hey, man, what time does it start? Dummy. It starts at 10 a.m. and runs until 5 p.m. Okay. I might get stuck by for Wisconsin, an hour. We'll see. We'll see you at the Hodag Festival in a couple in about a month. Let me see. But... Uh, these two. Uh, I, I'm trying to do it. I can't do it. <laughs> They'll be there. All right, everybody. See you next yeah. week. All right. Bye, bye gang.